Well, howdy guys. Well, last time we uh, spoke, I was above Sedona. I didn't really bother showing any of the uh, footage coming out of there. Uh, the hammock worked pretty good. Now that little sub seven is not exactly the most comfortable thing to stay overnight in. Um, Cause I'm used to the Eno double and I'm a big guy. So I think maybe if I was trying that with the double, it would have been a little bit better. Uh, I did end up putting kind of a, uh, the space blanket type thing on top of me just to keep the wind off. Uh, the wind never really died down last night. So we uh, came back through Flagstaff and uh, decided to head towards Grand Canyon. And uh, I stopped and was airing up, leaving Flagstaff and uh, had an admirer of the KLR. When we got to talking, he's a rancher out towards the Grand Canyon out here. He's coming in to get gas for a, uh, one of his water trucks that ran out of gas. And he said, you know, he's like, if you want to go camping, he's like, I'll tell you where to go because they won't let you camp around the Grand Canyon. So we'll see if this pans out, but uh, that's the road we're on now. Uh, Grand Canyon Main Park is kind of to the northeast of us. And I did go up there and get a pass. So if I come into the actual national park through the back way, um, then I'm, I'm covered. Uh, I'm not trying to sneak around the gate and not pay the entrance, but uh, I definitely want to have kind of a, uh, you know, my style of camping spot. Looks like there's a few folks that have pulled off and had some camping on here, so so far so good. Um, according to him, we can get all the way to the rim and camp right on the rim, so that's kind of the goal. I'm going to keep wandering up here. Um, I kind of want to make camp a little bit early because I might change out my clutch cable. I haven't uh, finalized that video yet, but uh, I'm running a, a Motion Pro Terminator, the very high-end cable, because I had a fairly new Motion Pro snap on me. Well, this one's feeling a little weird, and I think some of the strands have let go. I still got plenty of a clutch, but it's just a little loose. And uh, it felt a little crunchy as I was leaving Flagstaff. So I have there the same cheaper version that snapped on me before as a backup uh, routed right next to the, the uh, Terminator model. But um, other than not completely snapping, I think the Terminator isn't really worth the extra money. Um, I mean, right now it's still working, even though a bunch of the strands have broken off. Uh, the previous one would have just let go within a couple of uh, clutch pulls because that's what it did previously where it felt a little crunchy. I pulled it one more time and I pulled it one more time and it completely let go. And this thing's gotten me all the way out to the Grand Canyon here. So I'm not too worried if it just lets go because I'll just be on the side of the road for about a half hour swapping that out. But I don't know why I'm going through clutch cables so much on this KLR. I thought it had to do with the, uh, the previous mounts that maybe were super loose so I went on eBay and again this video is coming but I'm running Gen 2 control mounts on the handlebars and I even switched over to the warp 9 levers and it's still killing my clutch cable so I guess I'm just gonna have to carry lots of extras <laughs> I don't really know all right guys I'll bring you back when I uh, figure out where we're going well, I found kind of a overlook section, at least on the GPS. So I plugged the GPS in and said, route me there. Double check to make sure I wasn't going over any uh, reservation land. And it looks like it still has me going out there. So I'm going to have to take a right up here and cut the corner of the, I think it's the Havasu reservation that's uh, south and west of me here. Yes, a little rocky in some spots. That's why we have Rocky, the KLR. It's super ruddy. If you don't like uh, rolling through some of these crazy ruts from winter, then you'll have to slow down. A little apprehensive going over some of those pancake rocks. 
I had one catapult me uh, doing a section of the Arizona BDR. Just in the middle road, I didn't have to go over it. I don't think I got it on GoPro, but I haven't checked into my footage yet. And it flipped underneath me right on a skid plate, but then it just pole vaulted me straight in the air like a bucket bronco. All right, we're getting close up here. Go through another little bend. I haven't seen any other traffic out here. You do have to be careful with Arizona though because they legalize those little off-road golf cart things for the street use. So those guys just go everywhere. And they're doing 70 miles an hour. Let's see. Should be a road around here somewhere. I have this little S-bend. That was a little rough for KLR. Full of luggage. That's why we got a skid plate though. Beautiful day. Winds have calmed down here anyway. Man, nearly got blown off coming up, uh, was it 180 out of Flagstaff to here. That was some of the windiest highway riding I've done. I'm sure it's uh, comparable to the Atacama Desert in Chile. Everyone says when you go across that thing, you're just at 30 degrees sideways. Turning around because this is taking us back over to where that last gate was. There should be a road back here somewhere. I just hope it's not the one I'm remembering. There was one back here, but it looked like it had been uh, discontinued use.